Hi guys, welcome back. Yeah, I know, this is not normal. I am in America visiting my parents and this is my old bedroom. And I did a lot of projects when I was younger back there. So I thought, hey, you know, I'm here, I've got some free time, I'll do another painting tutorial and what would be a more fitting spot than a place where I spent so much time in my youth. Uh, this week I am going to be showing you how to do an African or an African-American skin tone and I'm going to be using this little figure right here to do it. This is a Zulu warrior from War Games Foundry. I also actually have a shield here. I'm not going to show you that because, well, you'll see it later in the painting tutorial. It's a pretty simple figure, uh, so that'll be good for just focusing on painting skin and flesh. He's already been base coated with gray enamel and uh, I based him, and I did all that before I came here because I thought that would just make things easier. So we're just going to go ahead and work on that. Uh, sorry if I sound a little hoarse or blah right now. I'm getting over a really nasty cold, so I apologize for that in advance. It's a great way to start your vacation, by the way. But anyway, why don't we just go ahead and get started working on this Zulu warrior. Okay, so I'm now going to start out by base coating our Zulu Warrior uh, using um, Rhinox Brown from Citadel. Like I said before, I don't have the same paint selection here as I do normally, so I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. But this is basically a nice, deep, dark brown shade, which will make a perfect base for everything that we're going to be doing in the future. Also be sure to uh, base coat his spear and also the back of his shield using that same color because we need just a nice dark rich brown color to serve as the base for all those wood areas. Next I'm going to darken all the recesses in the figure even further by applying a very generous wash of Nuln oil all over all of the skin areas of the figure. Now I'm able to start highlighting the figure and I'm going to begin here with a mix of the Rhinox Brown from the base coat and some uh, Mournfang Brown, which is a slightly lighter shade and it's also from Citadel. And I'm going to mix those about 50-50 and that's going to be my uh, first sort of highlight coat. When you're painting um, African skin tones, what I said in the introduction about there being, you know, just a way to paint African skin tones. There really isn't. Africa's obviously a big country. Uh, there's a lot of regions and there's a lot of different people living there and there's a huge variety in, you know, skin color uh, throughout the continent. So before you start painting, you know, anybody, you should really do some quick research on Google or whatever. Look at what, you know, people look like in the area that you uh, are, are planning to paint units from and, you know, figure out what color you need because some color, some places it skin tone is very very dark brown other places very light um, and I did a quick search on uh, Zulus and found that on average it seemed that uh, a lot of Zulus seem to have sort of a um, kind of a middle brown colored skin with a bit of a reddish cast to it it's really not all that dark it's a really sort of nice medium brown with indeed with red and even a little bit of yellow in there so that's what I'm gonna be shooting for with this figure My next highlight layer on the figure is going to be just pure Mornfang Brown and I'm going to be applying it to almost all areas of the skin just as I did in the last step. The only areas that are not really going to get covered by this layer are going to be really the deep shadows kind of you know under his arms you know in those sorts of areas at the bottoms of his legs between his toes and fingers and you know under his sort of the mus musculature on his chest but almost all other areas are going to get painted with just the Mornfang brown here and I'm going to feather it out lightly or sort of blend it so that it sort of uh, goes nicely into the last layer that I apply. The next layer I'm applying is going to be a mix of that Mornfang brown, but now with some uh, foundry chestnut medium also added in. And this is going to be providing a lighter highlight color. And I'm going to be focusing this now on areas that be hit with light, like knees, the tops of feet, his um, sort of the backs of his calves, the tops of his arms. But of course, you know, the areas on his face, like his nose, his forehead, his chin, those sorts of areas that would be getting really hit with a lot of extra light. The next 
next layer I'm applying now is just pure uh, foundry chestnut medium. And this is really something that should be only going on the high areas where there's a lot of light. And I've thinned the paint down a fair amount here so that it's nice and transparent so it blends out really well. Um, you'll probably want to go back in and probably touch up some of the darker areas on the figure as necessary. And I'm kind of doing that as I work. So the lines between the toes and the fingers and sort of the lines on the face, I am going back in with dark paint as I need to and correcting those after I've applied the high highlight colors to the figure. Finally, we're going to do almost an edge highlight of the figure. It's not really an edge highlight because it's a skin, but what I'm using for this is um, Foundry Flesh Shade and Foundry Flesh Medium. And you may say those are totally wrong for this skin tone. Well, normally they would be, but we're thinning them down an awful lot here and I'm applying them in a sort of a transparent way and really blending them out. And when you do that over a really darker color like we have here, it has a totally different effect than if we were just trying to paint a sort of a Western European type figure with a normal base coat and it makes just a nice lightening effect but these colors should be used very very sparingly so really I'm only putting them on the tops of toes and fingers uh, sort of to define the edges of muscles on, in the, on the body in various places especially on the face around the nose the chin the mouth the ears the tops of cheeks those areas are all areas that we want to get nice and bright and I'm going to apply them there and especially that flesh medium that color is really really light so you need to be very very careful with that only just use it as a very high accent on those areas that are really, you know, critical to, you know, making the figure stand out, basically. The final step on the skin is to apply a nice light wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. This is a very nice red-brown color, and we said that the sort of Zulu skin tone was kind of a reddish brown, and this will serve to kind of unify all of the colors because some were more yellow, some were very light and creamy, some were very dark brown, and by putting this wash on, it deepens the colors, it makes them richer, and it'll pull them together and bring back sort of that sort of red kind of undertone that we want in the skin. Now I'm going to go and move on to painting the Zulu's costume and I did a little bit of research and saw that Zulu dress seems to be kind of very neutral. There's lots of cream colors, lots of whites, lots of browns. There's not a lot of bright color here. So this is a good study in how you can do a lot of those different shades and still keep the figure visually interesting, attractive and you know and not have it be too boring despite all of the you know sort of similarity in tones. I am going to sort of start out now by painting his um, leg wraps, his arm wraps, uh, his sort of his fur or um, feather collar, and also the sort of top fringe around his um, loincloth using Boneyard Shade from Foundry. And I'm going to make sure this is a really dense, nice thick coat because this is the base. Also on his um, shield, there's a little uh, sort of uh, plume at the top of that and you want to paint that also in using the Boneyard Shade color. I'm now going to move on to highlighting all those areas using Boneyard Medium. And this is another great time to practice overbrushing, which I've talked about before, but as a quick recap, you should take your paint, thin it down so it, it flows nicely, then take and wipe the majority of the paint off of your brush, and then apply it over these sort of very textured areas, very lightly, sort of brushing across the direction of the texture. So not don't go with it, but go across it, apply very lightly, and sort of apply more paint and apply more strongly to areas where light would be hitting. So on the case of say his arm wraps, you want to put more paint, you want to push harder and maybe put more layers on sort of the top part of his arms and on his shoulders, uh, at the, you know, really the tops of his shoulders and those kind of areas. So, you know, more pressure, more paint in those areas and less in the others and try to avoid getting paint down in all of your recesses. But this is a great technique for highlighting these highly textured areas, basically. Finally, we're going to do just the same thing again, but this time using Boneyard Light and applying it even more sparingly than before into the most bright areas on these 
particular parts of his costume. And as you can see, I'm going over the areas multiple times, and in some cases, filling in more of the recesses in areas where I really want to exaggerate the brightness of you know that particular area. And now I'm going to move on to the fur tassel sort of on his skirt. And I'm going to paint half of those in sort of a white color, but the other half I'm going to make brown. And the base coat I'm going to be using for these is going to be Spear Shaft Shade uh, from Foundry. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply immediately after a medium uh, highlight color of um, Foundry Tan Shade, followed by by spear shaft medium is the highlight color and then uh, just a little bit of extra sort of edge highlighting by taking that spear shaft uh, medium and mixing in just a little bit of bone yarn medium to lighten it up slightly and that's just going to be applied really sparingly sort of along the tops of these sort of fur tails or whatever they are. And next I'm going to move on to a white gray color. And that's going to be applied to the other half of the tails on his skirt and also his headdress, which, you know, is sort of sort of a fuzzy, a feathered thing. I'm not exactly sure what, but that's going to be white as well, white-gray color. Also, the front of his shield is going to be painted in these tones. And what I'm using here is basically the Foundry Arctic Gray Triad, though for the um, base coat, I have mixed some extra black into that because, if I, as I've said before in my videos, I find the Arctic Gray shade color just a bit too light. It's not different enough from the medium color, so I act like to darken it up a little bit just to get a little bit of extra contrast. So I'm going to base coat all of those areas first and I'm just going to go ahead and layer on the um, uh, other co two colors, the white and the medium art of gray on his headdress because that's a feathery area. I'm going to go ahead and use overbrushing again just like I did on the other areas of his costume that are furry or kind of feathered but I'm just going to be doing it now with the gray and white tones instead of with the uh, boneyard colors. The shield requires a little bit of special attention. I'm going to just be layering on the three uh, shades in the uh, Arctic Gray Triad as described before, but there are a lot of little slits on the front of the shield, and if you look at a Zulu shield, you'll notice that underneath, sort of at the bottom of all of those slits, you can still see a very strong dark brown or black line. So you need to very carefully apply the gray and white to this shield and be sure to leave a very clear black line at the bottom of each of these slits so that you know it will look accurate. Also when you're applying these layers don't worry too much about getting a really smooth even coat of paint. If, if there's a little transparency, a little blotchiness of some of the uh, undercolor show through which is something that tends to happen with whites and grays anyway that's absolutely fine in this case because we're painting sort of a cowhide here sort of uneven looking cowhide so having that sort of blotchy unevenness to the whites and grays here is actually an advantage for us and with the black dark brown lines you may actually need to go back in and touch them up with some of the rhinox brown depending on how neatly you're able to apply your white and gray base coat and that's something i'm going to be doing all along as i work here And now because our uh, shield is basically cowhide and sort of an African type cow, you can go ahead and put some sort of spots and stuff on the shield. And I think that's kind of a fun, neat thing to do. It adds some extra texture, a little bit of extra interest to the figure. And you can really apply as many or as few of these as you want. You can be, you know, very sparing or you can go all out. And what I'm going to do basically is just kind of freehand some flex on. Um, the, I'm base coating these areas using the Rhinox Brown again and then I'm going to go over and highlight them sort of in a gradient fashion from top going down with first using a, some spear shaft um, shade and then I'm going to follow that up with a little bit of the chestnut medium color and I'm just going to apply that kind of thinly so there's a little bit of transparency and just blend it out.
uh, then I'm going to start highlighting the wood areas and I'm using uh, some colors that I often use for dark wood which are going to be the chestnut shade and the chestnut medium color from Foundry. So this is going to need to go onto the back of the shield, sort of the pole on the back of his shield and also his spear shaft. Um, as you can see on the shield back, I'm applying that chestnut shade and I'm kind of feathering it downwards from top to bottom and you need to be a little bit patient here and do several layers so it doesn't look too messy. On the spear shaft itself and on that sort of pole at the back of his shield, you can afford to be a little bit stronger with the chestnut shade. You can apply more and you don't have to worry about blending and feathering it out quite so much. Uh, the chestnut medium, I'm going to apply in a very similar way. Um, mostly on the sort of the top and front um, of the, uh, the various pole aspects of the shield and the spear shaft. And on the back, I'm going to really be really light with it and really only apply a little bit towards the top because you just don't need it there. And, you know, just apply it thinly, blend it out, and and take advantage of the uh, of the transparency you get from applying these fairly light browns over a very very dark base color. And now there's sort of one more sort of brown shade that I want to apply to the model, and that's sort of a sort of a rawhide color, and I'm going to be using surprisingly the Foundry rawhide triad for it, and that is going to go on sort of his belt. Um, his chin strap that's holding his hat on and also on the straps that are holding sort of that pole uh, section to the back of his spear. And this is very straightforward. Just go ahead and apply rawhide shade followed by rawhide medium sort of more on the tops of these areas and where there's not any real direct shadow. And then finally use the rawhide light sort of as an edge highlight on the tops of all these areas to really get that extra bright, you know, pop of color that you were looking for on these thin strips. Finally, I'm going to finish up the metal area on the spearhead by applying a mix of um, Vallejo um, model air a steel and some black paint with more black in the mix obviously as a base coat and then follow up with a highlight of just the pure Vallejo Air steel um, as sort of an edge highlight on the areas where you know there would be a cutting surface. Now it's time to attach the shield to the warrior's hand just by applying a spot of super glue in the space designed for it and holding the shield in place for a few seconds while it dries. All right, and this is our finished Zulu warrior. I hope you found this useful and uh, maybe you got some ideas about how you can paint um, a darker skin tone. Like I said in the beginning, do your research, do your homework, find out what the skin tone looks like for the people that you're gonna be painting because there's a lot of variety and there's not one catch-all color that works on people. You need to not generalize, and especially if you're gonna be, say, painting an African-American uh, flesh, that's even more important because there's gonna be a way bigger um, diversity and skin tones in African Americans than even people living in different regions of Africa because everyone is much more mixed up. So if you want to have a realistic unit, consider painting people in all different shades and that's just going to look more believable. Otherwise, this figure I think was quite easy to paint. It's a great uh, way, I think, to practice some neutrals, uh, applying browns and whites and and you know all of those sorts of shades and still you know having a nice looking figure even though you really don't have very much bright color it's all very simple and this figure actually didn't take long to paint it was quite simple though of course if you had to paint hundreds and hundreds of these guys it might be a whole nother story so once again if you enjoyed watching this please like it share it with your friends leave me some comments you know about what you thought what you liked, what you didn't like, the usual, and you know, also of course subscribe if you haven't already because I appreciate those subscribes and it'll be easier to keep up with what I'm doing next. So I guess that's all for now and I'll see you next time and until then, uh, happy painting! <laughs>